Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about how geologists risk exploration wells. Oil and gas exploration is a very risky business. Only about 40% of exploration wells find hydrocarbons. Only about 30% of exploration wells find commercial hydrocarbons. And we're talking in the frontier, new basins, new areas, where we're looking for the first time, only 10% of wells find hydrocarbons. So normally, 60 to 70% of wells fail where we spent a lot of money finding nothing. So obviously getting the risking right, or at least better, will improve the exploration performance and will enable an exploration company to spend their money more effectively and hopefully drill the right wells. So first of all, let's define what we mean by risking. So chance of success represents the probability that the prospect that the geologists have described is going to contain recoverable hydrocarbons, potential reserves, within the estimated volumetric range. There's also the chance of economic success, where you put the economics as an extra layer, where the reserves range has to be above an economic threshold. So in order to do this, we have to look at the petroleum system and understand how that works. This is a picture of a petroleum system, and I'll look at all the individual elements in a minute. First of all, you have to have hydrocarbons, which are generated within a source rock. The hydrocarbons then migrate upwards into a potential trap. The trap contains a potential reservoir rock to hold the hydrocarbons and a potential cap rock or seal rock to prevent the hydrocarbons escaping further. And all of this has to work together in the right way. As, estimate, as shown on this Venn diagram, we have charge, source, reservoir, seal and trap all working together so we have to be within this golden zone for us to have a discovery. Any one of these elements fails we get a dry hole, sometimes a very expensive dry hole. So let's look at sources first. Uh, a source rock is the key to the petroleum system. So hydrocarbons are the products of organic matter which contained in the source rock such as the shale, sometimes a, a lime, an organic rich limestone. Organic matter is the remains of plants and animals that died millions of years ago. Uh, and the organic matter is converted into hydrocarbons by heat and pressure as a result of deep burial. So here we have a picture of a source rock, a picture of, of organic matter, which is then converted into hydrocarbons, oil or gas. And here's a picture of burial with temperature of where you have specific temperature windows for oil and gas to be generated. And a lot of work is done by geochemists to try to understand this particular part of the petroleum system. Migration is the process by which hydrocarbons are expelled from the source rock and then float upwards. Hydrocarbons are buoyant in water, so if they are not trapped, they will eventually reach the surface. Naturally, there needs to be a path from the source kitchen, where the hydrocarbons are generated, to the area where the potential traps are. And basin modeling, which is a complicated uh, 3D mathematical model, is used to try to predict this. A reservoir rock is the rock in which the hydrocarbons are stored within the trap. They're stored in a porous uh, rock, and the porosity is the percentage of volume of the rock which contains holes. The holes may be filled with hydrocarbons, they may be filled with water, or a mixture of the two. Typical reservoirs have between 10 to 35% of their rock space, uh, as spores. And here's a picture from a photo, from a microscope and the blue areas are porosity. Rock, reservoir rock also has to be permeable, i.e. have the capability of flowing and being connected also helps because a well can then effectively drain the area. So here's a picture of an outcrop of sandstones which are the, uh, the hard bits that uh, poke out and here's a picture of a reservoir model uh, which is used to try to predict how the reservoir will behave. A trap is a uh, geological structure where the hydrocarbons would uh, be uh, contained. Traps, traps can be structural, formed by tectonic forces, or stratigraphic formed by changes in layering. Uh, structural traps uh, are a little bit easier to see on seismic by geophysicists. Stratigraphic traps are more complicated and also have more things that can go wrong with them, but most of the recent discoveries have been in traps which have a strong stratigraphic element. So understanding those is obviously quite important. 
And then we have seal, which is the hardest element to predict. This is the cap rock, which uh, is put on top of the reservoir. It stops the hydrocarbons escaping through buoyancy. Sealing rocks can include shales or rock salt or evaporites such as rock salt or halite. And seals can be broken by excessive pressure. So trying to predict that is a bit of a challenge. And in an area where a geologists have been exploring for a long time, this is normally what tends to go wrong. So how do geologists do risking? It's very dependent on company procedures. Some people can subdivide the elements into, into, to give more complexity, to give more subtlety. Uh, and companies that have very comprehensive manuals and procedures to ensure that risking is done consistently. The geological team will estimate probabilities of each of the team's uh, elements uh, working based on technical analysis, uh, but it is subjective. And different teams will come up with different uh, chances of success for exactly the same data. We're people. The name of the technical work ideally is to polarize the risk, the kill or cure, to get to a situation where you would feel that something is either definitely or highly likely to work or highly likely not to work. Um, unfortunately, this isn't always possible, but this is what we aim to do. And then also an important thing is to have effective review by internal auditors, experienced technical risking team, or joint venture partners, which can try to overcome the cognitive biases that we all have and the dangers of groupthink. So how do we look at probabilities in a subjective way? Uh, this is a diagram where one is something which is certain, i.e. 100% due to is definitely going to happen, and zero is impossible. So for instance, what does likely mean to you? To me, it means about 70%, 65% probability. To other people, it could be 55 or even 50. So different people think in different ways. So a clear scheme like this would enable a company to come up with consistent values. So how do these prospects tend to rank? So this is a scheme where one would look at where people would uh, look at where a prospect called to sit. So uh, anything above 50% is generally tends to be in the realm of appraisal where you've already had a discovery just trying to work out whether this particular adjacent segment next to it is going to work or not. Uh, in the 40s to uh, late 30s tends to be in a proven play where you've already had discoveries. It's a relatively simple trap and you have geophysical support such as uh, um, uh, flat spots, uh, amplitude versus offset or AVA anomalies, um, and other QI um, phenomena which you will then use to try to, sub to, try to support your views. In the 20s you tend to have uh, situations where the traps are more complicated, uh, where perhaps you're entering into a new area or a new play within an existing area. And then the tens tend to be really new basins where you have an awful lot of things which you don't know. Now geologists would obviously view this in, in their own ways. So to sum up, we've got five elements, reservoir, seal, trap, charge and source, and all of these are equally important and they must all work. So are you feeling lucky or are you feeling smart? So best of luck with your exploration venture.